WCS Challenger as we now find out our final spot who will be qualifying through to WCS Austin as we already have three players gone through. Three Protoss have qualified so far and now we're guaranteeing ourselves a Zerg or Protoss considering the fact that Scarlet looks like she's currently queued up as Protoss. Yeah, she wants to continue... Uh with that, I was host for some reason, so I'm gonna start the game now. So Cactus Valley, our first map there. Happy to see that. We don't get to see it as much. Four Protoss qualifying through, Todd? I mean... Maybe? Mm -hmm. I got nothing to say. <laughs> <laughs> it's about time, right? <laughs> like we've done bad time. enough in tournaments, it's our turn now. Yeah, yeah. All, right. all jokes aside, <clears throat> it's good to see some Protoss representation. I'm sure we'll be all, we'll have some other races yeah. qualifying uh, in the others. I'm sure in WCS Austin they'll all die off very early on and then Terran and Zerg will do <laughs> really <laughs> All right, let's go. As we do have spawning down to the bottom. Okay, so it's all about servers. Uh, it's so weird to us Europeans, I suppose, that North America has several servers. Yeah. Because we just queue on Europe and we're fine. It's right? a big country. <laughs> yeah, it really is. As big as Europe. Scarlet wanted to go to Westworld. Westworld. Well, what kind of person would, have you, would you have been in Westworld? I don't really know. I can never decide. You would have killed everybody, mate. I know you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. All right. <laughs> I might be a sheltered nerd inside, but <laughs> deep down there's a killer. <laughs> Your true personality would have really come out there. <laughs> <laughs> and after every shot, done and dusted. <laughs> again, back to the good old shoulder swipe again. Uh, can anybody unpause? Are we a ref? Wait. Did you unpause? Yeah. <laughs> All right, okay, let's get back in. Uh, <laughs> it's Scarlet down to the bottom left in the red as our Protoss player, as she is switching up currently from Zerg versus Zerg. Doesn't want to apparently play that against some of these guys. And then up to the top left hand, we have Jon Snow, who knows nothing. Does he not, though? How could you know nothing when you have overlords? <laughs> you should know quite a bit with these guys. You should know everything. You've got overlords, you've got creeps, terrible. you've got fast Zerglings. So basically what we're saying is if Jon Snow knows nothing, he is the worst Zerg of all time. That would be like coming from a royal family yeah, and then having a job where you're really up high, but yet you still don't know a thing. Yeah, you're not, you're not privy to information. Yeah. It's almost as if like he's Jon Snow. He's yeah. not very clever. Imagine that. That show is way over high, by the way. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Everybody that I say that to gets offended. I mean, I'm not offended, but it's pretty good. No? It's all right. <laughs> they are way better right. shows. If you have to give it out of 10. 7.5. 7.5? You? Okay. Uh, oof. Ooh. Ooh. You put me up. 11. <laughs> okay. No, I don't like it that much. I think it's really good. I'd probably say like an 8.5. Like, I know What's your favorite show of all time? Um... I have a favorite anime of all time. No. <laughs> God. Um, I have a favorite anime of all time, which is Full Metal Alchemist. Okay. Uh, Brotherhood, not the other one. Of course. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think what an actual favorite show of all time would be. I have a lot of really obscure English comedies that I really like. There's a gentleman that goes by the name of Alan Partridge, which is so funny. Uh, because it's self-deprecating and extremely sarcastic and stupid. It's a typical British humor. Yeah, that one, yeah. So. Scarlet went for an old-school build here with the Forge. I think she was probably hoping to try and cannon rush, but uh, Jon Snow did a safe build against that with a later hatchery, so it was not really punishable, so she didn't even bother mm. going for it at all. It almost feels like a Wings of liberty as game, you know, with the Forge first, that we really don't see much of anymore. But yeah. Scarlet has shown already yesterday that uh, she opts for that build from time to time. Yeah, she's not afraid to kind of try out some of the more crazier builds, uh, really, that Protoss can bring out nowadays. Uh, there was some, you know, there was some scrappy games yesterday, but at the same time, there was, they were, there were builds based on what Scarlet, as you said, doesn't like to play against, or would perceivably not want yeah. to play against when it comes to Protoss trying to exploit things. So... We saw a lot of oracles, and they did quite a lot of damage. So maybe we could see some more of that from Scarlet again, down the line. 
about the ship corner now on the way. I think Scott is worried that uh, there could be an, some sort of attack from Jon Snow. Like where you, when you play this style, you play with very little information, like her gateway and the entire attack is going to be way later. Zealot into Stalker. This truly is a Wings of Liberty as game, by the <laughs> yeah. way. Like not not going for any adept early on. Oh, she's going to try to kill that. I think. Yeah, Ish, that's going to be right it. outside. That's one Stalker. So it's one single scared. Stargate goes down. And she's already on the third guy. It's like Scarlet, every single game that she's played as Protoss against Zerg. Oh! Overcharge! Yeah. Oh, okay, she's gonna get the Overlord after, too. That's sick. very cool. That was sick. The photon overcharge on the pylon was so good. Yeah, I was saying, um, every single game that Scarlet has played against Protoss, pretty much against Zerg, she take, she took the gases very early on, on, her, on her natural, which yeah. not every Protoss do. Uh, nowadays, like uh, a lot of processes, they like to delay that, take maybe a Nexus before they even go into those gases. Mm -hmm. So it feels like she likes to play uh, kind of with her, like her own touch and a lot of gas heavy uh, builds. Which made me think that we might see a second Stargate, but not yet. It's going to be double additional gateway in the first place. Maybe down the line she adds more Stargates, because so far Scarlet has shown that she also wants to go into a lot of Oracles. Oh, we saw that before. So. Drones and drones and drones for Jon Snow, oh. getting himself a spore crawler down. And I have gone sniped here by just a couple of zerglings right outside of Scarlet's base. Oh, that's a bit of a shame. Jon Snow. Definitely uh, finding a few mistakes here and there to try and punish. Mm -hmm. Obviously, like the, the overcharge earlier was good by Scarlet, but getting one adept like this, not exactly supposed to happen. Paving nest on the way. This overlord on the right hand side eventually wants to get in there, but there is a stalker already positioned to deal with it. And even still, it's a void rate follow up anyway from Scarlet, yeah. so it'll push. She'll push away that um, that overlord quickly. All right, Queen's ready and spawn in the main. That's a Zerg player using an oracle. Oh, you missed it. In the main base of Jon Snow. Oh, <laughs> she flew in, took damage, and left. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, this is harder well, than to it be honest. Seems. Yeah, <laughs> Pilly did the same thing. <laughs> yeah, he did. I'm just joking, guys, come on. <laughs> and the overlord gets on in, has a look around, <coughs> knows what's going on. Jon Snow hasn't spotted the third base yet, he's about to. That's a lot, a lot, but a, a lot of lings. There are a few adepts positioned already that are going to get in between those pylons. Yeah, there's two overcharges available, so that base should be safe. Yup. What's the plan behind this, I really wonder here. Hmm. For both players, Jon Snow, I'm guessing he's going to be playing Zergling, Bane, and uh, Hydralisks. That's mm. one of the ways that we've seen. I, I mean, once upon a time, you would have been wild to even think that this is a possibility against Protoss, but nowadays he's become one of the staples of the matchup. Mm -hmm. And how to play it solidly. You don't have to go for it every time, but it's a good style against the Adepts and the Air Units that we see come out a lot against Zerg. Whereas for Protoss, there is always going to be a lot of adepts involved, but then usually it's either going to be uh, Immortals, Charge Lords, and High Templars for Storm, or some sort of Mass Air behind it. So a lot of extra links being produced here for Jon Snow, realizing that there is a movement out here from Scarlet towards the middle of the map. It's not really that many adepts, but they do still have that shape potential to get away. So where are they going to go? Splitting off a few there, up towards the top, who do find Banelings that are morphing in. Start working on some of those. Yeah, hey, good defense so far by Jon Snow. Look, he's going to get a surround on the third base on some of these adepts. And uh, the Hydra then is about to finish, too. Easy this could, Things could get very dangerous, actually, for Scarlet if Jon Snow just makes a ton of units from there and then yeah. decides to go for an attack. Because in terms of tech behind it, she doesn't have much. She went for a Robo. Mm -hmm. Templar Archives now starts. So I guess he's going to rush to Storm uh, behind this yeah. and maybe go into charge as well. Jon Snow is in a very good position where he's been basically unhindered. Every little bit of an attempt hasn't really done much. There's going to be a try of a stasis ward, yeah. only catching one drone for the entire o um, the entire oracle. So that would have been useful later on, but at least there's two more left to be able to get vision on things. Yeah, second oracle is there for Scarlet. The first one is in top right. She's going to fly. No! It's just going to die. No! Okay, oh! back off. Back off, fella. 70 drones for Jon Snow, who's just making a ton of units right now. If he wants to go for an attack, I really think that it's super hard to hold his attacks, especially if you don't have Storm. And since Storm hasn't started here for Scarlet, I'm getting a little bit worried. Now, 
a lot of the time because I'm observing and because I see all the numbers mm -hmm. and the supply. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm thinking that somebody's going to attack, but very rarely do they. Nice. Good defense against this. Yeah, only one trigger. Very good. So where's that warp prism just gone? I need to find it. Where's it gone? Okay, so it's unloading in the main base, but Ooh. Ling's are instantly reacting. There was a baning drop on the third base of Scarlet, to which he reacted very quickly. Only lost two probes. Oh. Used the overcharge, so good defense. Not too bad. And more gates are going to go down here for Scarlet in our main base. Storm now being corner boosted out. Mm. And she made a bunch of item plus pretty early on her natural, so these are going to actually gonna have Storm very soon. Still some stasis while in the natural of Jon Snow gets triggered instantly. Mm. <laughs> she just has like oracles in these positions spamming stasis wards. Yeah, I like it. It's all right. We definitely saw it get full use from stats. That one's in a bit of an odd spot on this back here. Yeah. It's a bluff one. It actually made Jon Snow pull away. Yeah, I suppose Drones. it did. I, didn't, I don't think the ring even really reached that very extreme Yeah, it patch. didn't. But he doesn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> so denying some of that mining time. Uh, so that's a lot of Hydralisks now moving out towards the fourth base to Begin setting up staging for attacks towards yeah. there, but there's three pylons, there's a lot of high Templars. We saw True yesterday in a game where I think like his army wasn't supposed to be that good, get a full surround and a perfect engagement against Snape in game number one, remember? Mm -hmm. So even though like on paper, if you look at Jon Snow's army, it's supposed to melt under the storms <laughs> of the high Templars. <laughs> If he gets a good surround and gets a good engagement, I think Jon Snow might be able to win the fight, but yeah. it's going to be tough. That was really fun to watch down here. Um, Scarlet's uh, pylon positioning, by the way, like on that uh, ramp over there next to our army is m magnificent. Like this can buy a lot of time. I was just talking about a full surround. Like this yeah. would help a lot if our army even was to get surrounded in that location. But will Jon Snow even move oh, into no. that location? She morphed an arc when he set off her wall. Oh. Can oh. that go outside? Nope. Nope. Too fat, mate. We shall remain here forever. Where's the wall prism? Come and help us. I've still got our depth. Oh, up you in have the top to get left. immortals. Actually, that chunk of units on the right hand side on that fourth base kind of scares me. Like this is the part where Zerg starts attacking all over the place, and then if you have if you are split as the Protoss, you're gonna pay the price. But uh, Jon Snow playing very passive, actually, considering the style he's playing. Yeah. Very mid-game heavy. You don't want to let it Protoss max out, and now Scarlet is very close to maxing out. Bane is going to filter through here, but Force Fields go down straight Oh, away. on the left-hand side, Bailing sneaks past. Oh, they almost blew up these oh. High Templars, but they survived with very low hit points. Yeah, they're very, very close to death. They're going to have to be careful about all of this, but they're staying Where in. Was the Force oh, Fields? the Bailings got through! The Bailings got through onto this, and Jon Snow oh at the God. moment, army supply in this position, he even dances his Hydralisks, knowing how much damage he's actually done. And those Bailings just kind of moving on through onto Towards more High Templars. That's a disaster going down here for Scarlet. That will be GG. Jon Snow takes game number one. As easy as that. Kaboom. A full surround on this army and uh, Scarlet struggling a little bit with the force fields. The, the overcharges, I'm not sure, were even there. And she had a lot of units on the right hand side about to attack with uh, counter attack and zealots. I think those units needed to be with her army. The mm. force fields needed to be cleaner and uh, the, the storms as well. And, Jon Snow still, I thought he was going to be in much more trouble than this. I think like if you micro this uh, as good as you can as Protoss, you're supposed to beat this. But keep in mind, Scarlet is playing from South Korea yep, and uh, has a little bit of delay to deal with there. And uh, that might have played a role. Like if those force fields go down a little bit later than you want them to, then yeah. <laughs> it can change everything. Yeah, it seems like we will be going to West server. Uh, so uh, West Scarlet can have a little bit less, a little bit less. And what is your ping to central, blah, 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 blah. The further out you go, the crazier it gets. I guess so, yeah. <laughs> and west. Okay, so they're just deliberating where they're going. It seems like it will end up... Would, you, would you pick a white hat or a black hat? A white hat? Yeah? Yes. You'd end up with a black hat, though. <laughs> <laughs> but white's so cool, man. <laughs> It was spiking, okay. It's gonna take a little while, I suppose. What else is good? Um, what's it called? The president thing. House of Cards, that was really good. It's good. Was there more than three series? I can't remember. Three seasons, you mean? 
Yeah, that's what. It might have been a fourth. Oh, there might have been. I don't think I saw it. If there was. Hmm. Peaky Blinders, man. That's a sick show. People keep <laughs> you keep talking about that one, and I just never like picked it up. Peaky Blinder. Yeah. All the people from London, I suppose. Oh, were they from Newcastle? Uh, or Birmingham? Yeah, Birmingham. Birmingham. Mm. Yeah, that's how everyone is down in Birmingham, by the way. I saw the trailer. They have razor blades in yeah, their hats. That's, that's, <laughs> that's modern day Birmingham to a T. You don't want to go there. <laughs> Okay, let's go. <clears throat> I wonder if Scarlet might adjust her game plan according to her delay a little bit because, mm. like, the army she was going for is very micro heavy. We've seen players do that in the past. Remember when, like, Hyun was playing the the online cups on Europe? A lot of go for us. And he was just, you, you know what? I can't micro, so I'm just gonna mass roach and attack move everybody. Yeah, he did do that. And then if Scarlet was to think in a similar fashion, maybe she just camps mass air and goes carriers and then attack moves. True. Maybe. That is why we're actually seeing so much Protoss. Maybe she just doesn't feel like Zerg versus Zerg's the right way in this kind of if she yeah, does have tough. See? Yeah, definitely. Protoss can be as well, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> True. Don't land those force fields. That's what happens. All your high templars get blown up by Banelings. It's rare that you get to see Banelings blowing up high templars. That's yeah. what we saw. Actually, they survived at first, but uh, the Banelings got in on the right hand side. Yeah. That was a weird attack by Jon Snow, too, because I feel like it's not really supposed to work, that one. Mm. Wait, why am I in the player spot? Don't know, it's your turn to play, I suppose. Bring it. Would you beat Scarlet's Protoss? As my own with, with Protoss? Yeah. I assume so. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> yeah, true. I don't know, maybe not. Maybe not. Or maybe not. Or maybe not. <laughs> All right, well, the game is counting down. Bill Shear Vestige will be our next map. Remember, Jon Snow currently up one game. He just needs two more, and he will be qualified for WCS Austin. And last time we were in Austin, it was amazing. Went to the Brazilian barbecue, actually, of all places, which was really good. Good job. Yeah. No, we went to other barbecue places, but we went to the You're Brazilian. supposed to go to a Texas barbecue. We did Austin. as well. <laughs> Only. But I, oh, okay. All right. Gotta get that pulled pork. The pulled pork. Oh, God. So good. All right. Down to the bottom right hand corner in the red. It's Scarlet. Aptly named for the color. And over to the top left hand corner. It's going to be Jon Snow in the blue. Currently one game up. And again, opening with an extractor into a spawning pool. Jon mm -hmm. Snow, not a big fan of the hatchery first build at all. He likes to open with speed pretty quickly. Yep. Maybe he knows that Scarlet has a tendency as well to sometimes go for uh, some stuff like Forge and try and punish. Remember, it was on this map that she tried it earlier in the tournament. True. Against Puck. Oh no, who is it? It wasn't Puck. Oh. Uh, Let me check. Can't remember. Against Panda Bami. Panda Bami, yeah. That's true. Poor Panda Bami. Gas first, actually, for Scarlet. She's mining only a little, little bit from it, making sure she has at least 16 mineral probes. Mm -hmm. The ideal number. The most efficient number in the game. Thank you, Red Eye. Absolutely fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Six slings and speed on the way here for Jon Snow. Maybe an aggressive build here. Mm, Doesn't maybe. have to be, but... That's a lot of links. Yeah. That's a lot, a lot of links. And still no hatchery. All of that could have been a hatchery. Ish. Yeah, usually you keep on making links, and then at some point you'll have enough minerals to start the hatchery, uh, even though uh, he's getting the queen as well. Yeah, because you've got so many drones early yeah, on. Very exactly. Easy. All right, well, still, these links will come along, and there's not much to contest this. She has skimped on units completely. Yeah, and also, like, the Cybernetic Scar's not done. Because Scarlet didn't scout at all, it's kind of hard to read into this. Like, yeah. She's going to see a bunch of links, but not really going to be sure whether it's just slow links or if there's speed on the way. If you underestimate this, if you go down the ramp, you could be in a lot of trouble. Jon Snow not wasting any time. On attacking the Nexus, he just goes straight into the main base. He's gonna oh. try to unpower that gateway here and maybe even surround the Adept. Probe's gonna have to come off the line here, otherwise Scarlet is in a lot of trouble. But the Probe's like equally, if they take this fight, then they will end up dying as well. Trying to buy time for that Adept to come out. It does get out. It's very important, but there's still more Lings on the way. Ten more Lings in production. Speed's about to finish, Todd. Yeah, and that pylon's still exposed. With speed finishing, Jon Snow can just run oh. around the whole place endlessly. And right now, Scarlet, 
Even though she's not Pilot's taking a down. ton of damage, she's pulling a lot of probes away from the middle line there. There goes the pylon. And, and she's not making probes, she's not making anything, just units to try and defend. Gateway still un unpowered there. In the meantime, Jon Snow yeah. can just do anything he wants. He's making a ton of links actually committing to this instead of droning up. He needs to try wall this off or something. That, part, that probe needs to, well, he's making a pylon here, but there's more links about to funnel through. Ten more links. All, it's just probes now. With that Mothership Core out, you can't really do massive sustaining damage, so just get as many of the small little probes as possible. Yeah, oh, Johnson so is going to get so many. Oh, 10 have already gone down. Actually, not too bad for Micro here to try and keep some of them alive, with 14 already falling and 19 in total now falling. That is seven workers to 14. Scarlet taking a lot of damage. Yeah, and Jon Snow behind this is going to go into drones. He can very easily get a ton and get super far ahead economically. He already is. More links are on the way because Jon Snow realizes that there's still not going to be any ground units out, so why on earth not do this? I know they say lucky number seven, but I don't know who these seven walkers get us. No. Does the Nexus fall? Looks like yeah. it. There's no way you're going to be able to save this. Spoiler alert. Jon Snow wins. He's not dead yet! <laughs> I like the third base behind this by Jon Snow, playing it safe. Scarlet realizes she's too far behind. GG gets called, and Jon Snow goes up 2-0, one map away from qualifying for WCS Austin and uh, going further in this tournament, securing this eSports <laughs> earnings. That's the most important part. Yeah, nothing else matters. Yeah. <laughs> what? No, no, nothing, nothing happened. Uh, all right, well, um, <laughs> Scarlet. Actually, a lot of things <laughs> matters. The WCS points everything, but only because they lead to more sports earnings. Plot twist. Get that dollar. All right, well, okay, so game number three on the way in just a moment as Jon Snow, wow, one game away from qualifying. Uh, Scarlet is in now desperation mode. What does she bring to the table? <sighs> Scouting. A Scouting? Scout. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that might be a good start because Jon Snow, see, like I said, he seems to be a big fan of opening, uh, not with archery first, but mm -hmm. an early gas. And then even being able to see exactly how much gas a Zerg player mines in the start of the game can tell you whether he's going for drops or not. Yeah. Like, you know, if they stop mining gas after 100, obviously there's not going to be uh, enough gas to morph an overall to then drop. So that can be a big tell. So just go for a scout, play it safe. Guys like Neep scout almost every game and very early, like very rarely will they not do it. And the times that they don't do it, mm -hmm. it's only because of their image that they did it so many times and they know that they're not likely to get cheesed. True. So it's just a great way to go about it. I actually don't know why I don't scout myself saying this. I'm like, I'm silly. It's like, we should be scouting more. Just follow Neep's lead. Yeah, just follow Neep's lead. Follow the leader. He's a, he's a pretty good leader, to say the least. All right, so we are good to go. Proxima Station will be our next map. Just kidding. I'll try to get the 30 minerals, 30 minerals extra, and then I'll die doing it. All right. Just get rich of die trying. No, no. It's all about those esports earnings, but it's all about those minerals mining as well. If any example is a good one to follow, 50 cent is not it, <laughs> I suppose. Why? Because <laughs> he's rubbish. He's a great actor. I mean, you say that. Happy April's full. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, mainstream things. All rubbish. <laughs> All of them. <laughs> All right. Proxima Station on the way. He's a great boxing promoter. Is he? <laughs> what do you want? That? I don't know. <laughs> Let's get into it as we do have two games up. That's one. That's two. All right. Down to the bottom left hand corner, we do have Scarlet in the red playing our Protoss. And up to the top right-hand corner, it's going to be Jon Snow. Two games up, one game away from qualifying for WCS Austin. What a legend. Who used that computer? This one? Yours? Yeah. Uh, the drag scroll speed is at 20%. That's your I need. I need to have a chat settings. with somebody. No? I can't believe I only realized now. I was trying to scroll on the side of the screen. It's going like at a... Snail speed. Isn't that your own No, settings? I don't have French, but uh, <laughs> I want to be able to move around when I'm watching the game, Kevin. I guess so, I guess so. Why do they call it Escar Go when Go normally means like moving fast, you know? It's with a T at the end. Is it? Escar Go with a T, but uh, the T silence. Okay. You think everything that's 
<laughs> that says go in it. Like, what, what were you going to say? I was going to say snails don't go very fast. Oh, my God. <laughs> Just... Yes. <laughs> uh, Roddy, I need you. <laughs> <laughs> Come save him, Roddy. Come save him from the bad ginger. <laughs> For those of you wondering, I'm alluding to Rotterdam joining us for the next qualifiers. That's true. The Europe ones. That was just Europe with Roddy casting. That's true. Roddy and The Tops. roles have been reversed. Wait, He's how? denying his, um, oh, his yeah. uh, American nationality. I know. <laughs> What's wrong with that? For the longest time, yeah, he was you're doing the North America is. ones, and he's doing the Europe ones. It's a t travesty, isn't it? <laughs> you guys just like to jump ship anytime you can. Oh, no, I jumped ship long ago. <laughs> anyway, so. Scarlet actually going to go for an, uh, a little bit of a scout uh, right outside of her base here to see if Lynx were there. I like that, playing it mm. a little bit safer than in the previous game, but it's a, a fairly safe map against Lynx Rushes. The fact that there is such a small ramp that you need to cover uh, makes it way easier than Outbasher Vestige. Yeah. And Jon Snow, I love that he changed this build, by the way. Instead went for uh, the hatchery first down the ramp, then into speed. And Scarlet again going to be going for a Stargate. She just wants to play with Oracles every single game. Yeah. What is going fun. on? She's been hanging out with Has too much. Maybe. Unfortunately, they haven't really done too much, especially in that game on Cactus Valley. But hopefully, Scarlet can get in and do a bit more with them. Make this Has a, is a bad influence. This, what are you on about? Has is one of the greatest influences before, of all mankind. Before people hang out with him, they actually play some macro games. <laughs> yeah. And then they're like, wait a minute. <laughs> if I could just do this, it'd take some maps as well. Sorry, Zoe Wing. Third base going down on the right-hand side. That's very again, far away. Scarlet with a very quick third guess on a natural Ooh, nice. every single time. So what? Give me, give me the mindset of a pro gamer. Why this third base for Jon Snow over the one at the very back? Um, there is some sort of mind game in there where, like, the only thing I can think of that makes a lot of sense is. He might want to be aggressive, and then he gets there. He gets across the map way faster by taking this one. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't really see a scenario where Scarlet, like, she goes for a sick War Prism drop right. in, the, in the pocket expansion of Jon Snow, and then she doesn't fly past that one base on the right-hand side. Sure. And, like, sees it before, and she's like, oh, well, I guess I'll drop some Adepts or something. So, perhaps some aggression. Like, if you think about it, with these three bases, like, She's really, um, Jon Snow is really far forward towards that third base of Scarlet, but actually, if he was going to do that, he might even have taken the gold base. Yeah. Uh, although, that being said, the rocks are a bit of a hindrance right between them. Well, I mean, Scarlet goes target every game. Like, yeah, she be throwing. yeah. I mean, those debris can't take a long time to kill. It's 2,000 HPs. How much armor do those ones have? Oh, I can't see on this disc thing. Uh, but anyway, you're right. Another gateway going down behind is for Scarlet. That's the second one only, actually. So no uh, triple gateway setup just yet. No transition in sight either. Lynx tried to go up and poke around, say if they couldn't find anything. Not to be the case. At least this Vordery got herself an overlaw kill, but still this Oracle hasn't gotten any drone kills at all. Jon Snow is very, right. very good about the defense. Look at the production tab. Well, it's kind of what you wanted. I mean, or predicted. I guess. Is this for mass Oracles though? I think it might be. Because surely okay, so if it was for Fleet yeah. Beacon, it would have begun before. Scarlet needs to take a very quick third then with this because having enough gas from just four gases for a triple Oracle production from two Stargates is mm. going to be tough. So I would suspect there's going to be a, a third Nexus started momentarily. It's actually been delayed quite a bit right now. Base is under attack. Base is under attack. It's just by these Zerglings at the front and they're not really getting too much information for themselves as much as they keep poking up there. So, three workers were killed off. It's 50 workers to 48. Forge on the way. More oracles going down. How can Jon Snow get the information required about this many oracles? Uh, he needs an overseer. The thing is, though, like, as a reflex when seeing some sort of oracles, Zerg's always going to get spores and some queens. Mm. It's, uh, it's all about the, having the right amount in the right place and kind of being lucky at times. But yeah, ideally, you want to be able to see that the opponent's massing oracles, and then, then you, you have to get a ton of spores. 
if you barely don't respect this enough, then you could be taking a lot of that. Oh, one of the Oracles being sacrificed, actually. That's bad. Any attempt at a fourth base will be slightly slowed down because of the stasis wards that are you know, in place. But... You know why Joe Snow took that base? Mm. Because Scarlet wouldn't expect it to be there, and she finally scouted it, but then she flew an Oracle and lost it. Yeah. Sickest <laughs> anticipation. <laughs> The ultimate trap set up oh, three minutes ago. Ling's at the front base of the third, though. We're going to try and put on some pressure. Put an overcharge, as well as the Adepts. We'll push it away. And, and the main base of Jon Snow. He's so good one. about reacting to it. Most Oof. of the time, yeah. Yeah. Nice. This one Void Ray is on the rampage, by the way. Where is it? Talk about WWE. That guy's suplex suplexing some Zerglings in the middle of the map. It's the Brock Lesnar of Void Race! And Nidus on the way for Jon Snow. I think he's starting to realize that the mass air here is what's on the menu for Scarlet. So with the amount of queens that he's made, which he's up to nine right now, if he gets a ton of ground units and uh, gets a Nidus up across the map, he might be able to find some success. And look, he's already sneaking an Overseer on the left-hand side of the map across the map. That I don't think will be found by, uh, by the Void Ray. Oh, such good reactions once again from Jon Snow. Doesn't allow too many of those drones on the right-hand side. And kills off an Oracle up to the top. This Oracle's just being chased. Now it sees the Nidus Worm, though, unless it doesn't see it behind the Overlords, I mean, but it should do. I guess good thing these things are un invulnerable when they go up, right? Yes. Things at the front trying to move in. There's a lot of cannons going to try and go down at the front as well. Look at this Scarlet reacting. But where is the Overseer? In the natural. Oh, there is only God. one pylon there for the overcharge. All the cannons at the front aren't going to be just for nothing. Uh, because this is going to go down at the back and there's no defense for this at all. And Scarlet hasn't seen it. She finally sees it and moves uh -oh. there, but it's very late. The Queens are going to come out of that Nidus first and start transfusing it if need be. Doesn't even need. Bring along those little changelings for good measure as the Oracle's now going to work on a lot of these Queens, bringing them down very, very fast. That's a great response there from Scarlet. Pounding away at those Queens and they will fall. Yeah, there was too many Oracles for Jon Snow to be able to handle for now. So he's going to have to go into a more passive game from there. And Scarlet, by the way, with some great stasis wards here on the potential, what she thought was going to be third basis. Mm -hmm. There was one on the natural pocket expansion that's going to delay that one quite a bit. That's very good for her. This army, though, from Scarlet's not too bad. There's a lot of um, adepts. And there's the hardly, ground is bad. Uh, the the ground actually, the, she's losing the adepts. Oh, oh, well, they're all going to die. But like I said, there's not enough spores here in, on some of those bases. Only all. one on the right-hand side. No anti-air at all, really. I oh. is start coming out now, but he's very late. Yeah, they're going to die very quick to these oracles. And the good transfusions on towards one of those hydras, at least. Every single one that, she can keep, uh, that Jon Snow can keep alive is going to be brilliant. And that uh, fourth base is going to be cancelled there by all these roaches and lynx. It's a huge army from Jon actually, Snow. These oracles use so much energy. Even attacking on the ground against these cannons might be worth it there for Jon Snow because then it will trigger more energy being used and then maybe the follow-up might be able to kill Scarlet, who has to go into some sort of ground transition here with charge right now. With Hydras, surely even a Nidus Worm at the front and then just pushing would be quite powerful, no? Yeah, yeah or even walking there. <laughs> yeah, that, that works too. Pathogen glance on the way now. Jon Snow is getting quite a bit of uh, gas income. Remember, he's on six gases for a long time, even though he hasn't fully saturated the ones back uh, on his third base now. It's time to set up the stasis wards in defense and just seal herself off on these three bases. Because anything else is going to be difficult. Pathogen glands, as you said, on the way. Sky is going charge here, but there's already so many roaches on the ground that I don't think Jon Snow has to worry too much about charge loads just yet, unless Scarlet gets an, like, an overwhelming amount of these guys. They're not necessarily going to do that well, and uh, I'm starting to picture some uh, crazy fungals there, Carlos. That worries me for Scarlet. Fantastic fungals, Todd. That's beautiful fungals. Beautiful really fungals. I'd just like to bring in every single description. As this Void Ray leading the charge. <laughs> Get it? Charge up. And going to be on the right hand side. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help myself. Dear Lord. Deal. <laughs> but oh, the Oracle... spores are late in the pocket expansion. If Scarlet was to fly there, she might wreck the entire base. Mm. Might be worth going. Stacy Sword in the ramp. Oh, too did late. you see the? Some revelation here would be huge, actually. Yeah. To Where keep a tabs on these uh, infestors. Where are the infestors? Oh, that now. Keep an eye on those. 
As the Oracle's gonna fly in here once again. Fungo, oh my god. That's a lot of power behind these Queens and Hydras, though. As much as the Oracles are killing some stuff off, this is a massive amount of army to just sacrifice against that. And GG, Jon Snow, congratulations to him as he qualifies for WCS Austin. Good job here, uh, solid all around. Even though he didn't have that many spores on that third base, he got to Infestors and uh, landed, I guess, some good enough fungals. Mm. To hold on, had enough Hydralisks and uh, solid all around, which is, I think, what you need to be against somebody that off races. I mean, no offense to Scarlet Protoss. Uh, a lot of the time, these matchups can be tricky, and uh, the best way to go about it is to try and stay solid the whole way. You can throw in some more aggressive builds, and he did yeah. that very successfully. So. Definitely uh, getting fortunate in situations, but uh, played played good enough for sure here, yeah. did Jon Snow. Yeah, indeed. Congratulations to him. So he is our one Zerg that qualifies on through for WCS Austin, along now with Neeb, Puck, and Pilly Pilly. Was Pilly Pilly correct? Yes, he was. So impressive stuff there. We can check him in the brackets to see exactly what's gone on and what is happening at the moment. So we have three more series to go as we have Pilly Pilly and Jon Snow playing against one another. The winner of that will go on to play against Puck. And then the winner of that will go on to challenge in the grand finals up against Neeb. All best of fives. And first place will take away $1,600. I think for now, Todd, what we're going to do is we're going to go to a break. And when we are back, we have those three series up and coming here for the WCS Challenger.